Welcome back to another edition of Joe's Crabby Old Shorts right here in the Ranton Chair. This will be Filter Tube of Doom in place of the Lucky Strike. Sorting the world's problems out. <coughs> One slow inhale and hacking fit to a time. Well, it's that time of year, that time of the month, folks. Grocery day is upon us, which means I have a crabby old person to get up and fed and dressed and sent off to the Walmart so that her and I can eat for a month. And I've sent her with a grocery list full of nutritious and delicious items for me to cook at home, which means what? Mom's coming home with cake and Tylenol and lots of candy and cookies. <sighs> it is what it is. I'm not going to let everything get me down. And you know what? That's kind of what I want to talk about today, right? See, the whole damn world's going cuckoo for, you know, crack cocaine puffs about this whole Tucker v. fucking... Putin interview, and I haven't listened to it. You know why? Because I don't think it's really relevant, and I don't think it's pertinent to our day. Now, some of you who are new here uh, to the channel, hi, my name is Joe. Uh, I'm a middle-aged alcoholic uh, with some severe anger issues. Uh, you know, I have a colored past. I was a career criminal for a long time. I took long-term care of my father for, like, over 20 years until he died. And, uh, yeah, I've done some interesting things in my life. Um, I, I'm, like, big into firearms and freedom and doing all the things. Uh, my primary goals in life, besides get every attractive woman in the Pacific Northwest pregnant and drink too much, is, uh, you know... Set all the communists and pee-pee touchers on fire, because, you know, why the fuck not? So, like, you're listening to a, a, a lewd, crude, bald dude with an Adolf stash with a rooster tattooed on his wiener, okay? So, just bear this in mind when you, you hear my political commentary on things. Now, I'm not knocking other creators that are riding the wave of Putin and Tucker, you know. Uh, I, I've heard Tucker Carlson called a lot of names, like, you know... The, fucking Putinist, and, you know, like, he's simping for Russia, and he needs to be censured, which I, I, I find it funny that the liberal media is calling for somebody in the opposing side of the media to be, like, censured, right, and sanctioned, you know. Huh. <laughs> That'd be one of them hoist-on-your-own-petard scenarios, like, for example, let's say if they, you know, slap fines on Tucker for talking to... Somebody who does not agree with their argument, well, what happens when the political power eventually shifts and it goes back to red team instead of blue team? How do you think that's going to work for these people? You know? See, I, I don't take political sides. I don't really give a fuck. I know, I know most of you are like, but yo, it's the most important and relevant thing all week on the internet. I don't care. Get on your bandwagon. Jump around, hoot and holler, tote snakes around like some damn Appalachian fucking snake handler. I don't care. You do you, boo-boo. <laughs> you know, uh, look, like, Vladimir Putin isn't the devil, okay? And neither is Zelensky. Like, these people, they're all political tools, okay? They're there to further their ends. Zelensky, on the other hand, I think he is genuinely evil. Uh, he's also bilking our country dry because he happens to align with the communist pee-pee toucher party. And, like, we're sending all this military aid there, and, you know, I, Koba brought up a good point on Rumble. If you don't know who Koba49 is, check him out. They're basically selling the military aid to belligerent nations that are, like, doing their own thing. And they're funneling the money back, you know, and then they had old uh, Banky Friedman or whatever the fuck. Uh, he was turning dollars into Bitcoin and then fucking funneling it back through the other way. You know, this whole damn thing's a money laundering scheme. So I don't side with Ukraine in this. You know, as far as I'm concerned and I care, I think that the contested areas voted to go back to Russia. The other areas didn't like it. And so they started a civil war internally Russia got involved and backed the people that wanted to go back to Russia. And so we got involved and started sending money. And I don't say we, like me and you, the viewer at home. I mean, our communist pee-pee toucher fucking government. So I don't side with them. 
Russia is also a nation that's basically run by a dictator. Uh, he's very anti-gun. If you look at Russian gun laws, you'd think, oh, man, these people have all kinds of fun. No. Actually, Russia's gun laws were so much better under communism because basically you could bribe your way into the Communist Party and basically have any firearm you wanted. Okay, that's one good thing communism had. Well, okay, there's three good things communism came up with. Vodka, surplus weapons, and attractive women that are underfed, that don't speak a word of English, all right? If you don't like it, eat my shorts. I don't care. Okay, here's the dealio. Russia is basically a world power at this point. Their economy is run by the petrodollar. Now, I'm not going to go down some conspiracy rabbit hole because I don't have enough coffee in me. And to be honest with you, like I said, you know, I, I think a lot of creators are having the proverbial nervous breakdown about this Tucker Carlson interviewing Vladimir Putin. Let me ask you something. How, how words are dangerous? Like, like, I don't know of any word out there that actually constitutes assault or battery. Okay. I don't think that there is any words in the English language that I know of that can actually harm a human being. Like, if, for example, if I said the cunt word, I don't think very many women out there would get a nosebleed from it unless, you know, their head hurts from the fact that I use very politically incorrect language. You know, some of you might get offended by it. I don't care. Like, I'm, I'm one of those people that's about absolute freedom, okay? Either everything's okay or nothing's okay. And I lean in the side of everything's okay, with the exception of a couple of different things, right? You don't hurt women, kids, or old folks. You don't take advantage of people that can't defend themselves. You leave children alone. You don't snitch. And you back your homies play, right? Got to have each other's back, you know? Does that mean if your friend you know, fucks up that you don't get together and throw a boot party and waffle stomp their ass? No. I'm saying y'all got to fucking have each other's backs, right? But do I think this Putin v. Tucker thing is like some world-ending event? No. I think it's the, the bandwagon of the day, right? Where everybody's going to hoot and holler and tote rattlesnakes around and speak in tongues and do whatever fucking kinky Bible shit they do. Which I'm not knocking Christians, okay? I'm just knocking the ones that are fucking absolutely crazy. There are zealots in every religion, okay? Christianity just happens to be one. <laughs> the, you know, like, I support Jesus and what he did, but I sure as fuck don't like his fan club some days. <laughs> you know? But I see all these people, man, and they're having a nervous breakdown about this shit. Look at it from my point of view, okay? Let's say Vladimir Putin came by your house, and he's like, hey... Let's drink some vodka and do cocaine together, you know, and you drink in the Russian way, you know, you're knocking back shots, having a pickle or some rye bread, you know, you're doing a little bump and he's like, hey, let's go to the strip club, you know, and, and let's watch the Church of the Shaky Buns for a while. Like you'd probably go hang out with, him. you know, you'd talk about his time in the KGB, you'd talk about Russian weapons, he'd talk about American weapons, you'd all have a good old time, you'd probably punch the fuck out of each other, help each other up, pour another drink knock him back, have a few cigarettes, you know. Like, he's one of those world leaders that actually at least is about what he says he's about, right? I think most of us can all agree on that. Like like Donald Trump, for example. Whether you like the guy or not, he's probably somebody you could hang out and have a beer with and at least have an intelligent conversation. Now look at the other side of this. How many of these other people that are world leaders could you do the same thing with? Because I don't know of very many. Like, nobody want to go have a Molson with Justin Trudeau. Like, you know, Green Thumb might, you know, knock a bottle of Molson over his head before he rammed his dump truck right up his ass. You know, that might be a thing. But a lot of these world leaders, man, they're fucking kinky. You know, they're, they're into, the, like, the, the freaky deaky shit with, like, you know, other men and kids and animals and shit whereas like the two based world leaders that we had you know the former president and like vladimir putin like the ones that openly speak out against abuse and molestation and shit like that 
they're the ones under the spotlight. And I think that's kind of what we need to take away from this. You know, it is what it is, man. Like, I'm not getting on this bandwagon. Like, I'm a week sober at this point. I hate it. Uh, I know people say, but yeah, but yeah, this is the best. You should never drink again. Shut up. I don't want to hear it. Uh, drunk is where a man belongs. You know, same as Lucky Strike cigarettes. It's just, it's part of the process of growing up and being an adult. Okay, I've been doing this a long time now. I know. Right? I'm almost 35 years old. Okay? I started boozing when I was 12. I started smoking when I was 12, too. You know? You know, I started the needle drugs at about 14. And I got my shit together when I was like 27. I've been clean almost 10 years, man. Cut me some fucking slack here. You know, it is what it is, but... You know, you can go about your day and you can get on the bandwagon and you get moved along with this whole border thing. Francis interrupt us. Anyway, it's that time of day. People are going to and fro. But you can get on board with this whole bandwagon thing. The border and everything else. Or you can do what I do. And do something productive with your day. Put some food back for your family, right? Go through your inventory, you know, clean your firearms. Learn how to use your firearms. Better equip an arm and train yourself. Because if the shit ever pops off, you know, it's going to be a bunch of mean old men hurting people that hurt other people. That's, that's the way it's going to be. You look at every civil war in history, you know. One side got bullied by the other until they had enough and then decided, you know what, fuck you. I'm going to wear you as a skin suit and Silence of the Lamb dance, right? And if you, the viewer at home, made it to the end of the video, I've been doing this word of the day thing because I feel like it, you know? Uh, this channel is basically because I feel like it. Uh, uh, type in Goodbye Horses, you know? The Q Lazarus song, right? From Silence of the Lambs. Because we're in just that kind of mood today, you know? And as always... Take care. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Uh, I might go live later. Uh, depends on how many of my chores I get done before Mama and Hose Beast go to the grocery store. And uh, yeah, I might interact with you, the viewer at home. So as always, uh, take care. God bless. Have a wonderful day. I need more coffee and go shower and shave. So eat my shorts.